Here's my Bluetooth adapter board to add Bluetooth to a tube radio. Many of you have actually built this. And after the last video where I described in detail the final version of this board, I had the question, what if you have an AC-DC set? In other words, what do you do if you've got a radio that has a hot chassis? No transformer. So one of the mains connections is directly connected to the chassis of the radio, which means that if you plug it in the wrong way, your radio has got full mains voltage all over the chassis. I gave it some thought and I've come up with a solution that makes this board adaptable, usable on any type of radio that has a phono input, whether it is a hot chassis or not. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, stick around and I'll show you exactly how to do that. The alteration or the modifications required very simple and the result is really amazing. If you saw the video in which I described this version of the board, you'll know that uh, this is supplied by the 6.3 volts AC heater winding of the radio itself, which goes to the tubes. Now, this is the first challenge because most AC-DC sets or hot chassis sets do not have 6.3 volts AC available. The heaters are in series and they all add up to the main supply voltage, which sometimes needs a ballast and sometimes not. And the second challenge was because this thing has got that commercially available Bluetooth module and it has a uh, preamplification stage here to raise the level of that signal to the level that most of these radios require for the phono input, just to give it the same volume level as if you were listening to radio itself. This thing uses the 6.3 volts AC also to provide the uh, positive and negative supply to an op amp which we now have a problem because we do not have, as I said, the 6.3 volts AC. And then this is the signal that goes to the phono input, which in this particular case, in the case of the original board, is where the ground comes from for everything that has to do with the module, the uh, preamplification stage and everything else. Now, this thing has got an isolation system here, which isolates the DC obtained from the uh, heater winding, heater supply. It provides five volts DC to the board, but it's insulated or isolated in terms of grounds with this little chip over here, or little component over here, which is a DC to DC converter. Now, here we've got a problem again, because we do not have the uh, supply and we have to provide a ground to this from the supply itself. With the original board, it was getting it from the audio ground, sort of the ground was coming back. Now, this is a big convoluted description for something that's very, very simple. And I'll show you what needs to be done. What we have here is a Grundig 90U and it is a hot chassis radio. This one has uh, actually got uh, long wave, medium wave and FM. And most, most importantly for this particular experiment, it's got a pickup input, a phono input called TA. So when you click that, it's going to get the signal from the phono input at the back amplify it and send it out through the speakers. Now this one has a transformer and yet it is still a hot chassis radio and this thing had me baffled originally when I did the restoration of the set and I'll link that above if you want to look at it. Because I saw a transformer I thought ah this one's safe. So let me show you just how safe this thing is. Here is the plug. Now this is where we have a problem. In Portugal we do not have polarized mains plugs and sockets. I've written this here but these plugs can go in either way. They can go in that way well, they can go in that way into your socket. This thing won't mind. It fits either way. So you don't know which side of this is going to have mains and which side is going to have neutral. And there's no way of ensuring that you can uh, guarantee that. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this multimeter and I touch the chassis, see that? That line which I have marked as neutral, which is should be, this is what you want to be neutral. That line is directly connected to the chassis. Okay. Now chassis could be that. It could be that. It could be that. It could be that. It could be just about anything. Now, the thing that they've done here, they've been very clever. They've made sure that the, the entire enclosure is made of a material, in this case, wood or plastic, that does not conduct electricity. And the idea is that if you have this radio on and the chassis is live, so if it is hot chassis, if you do plug this into the live side, they want to make sure that you don't get zapped. So everything is sort of insulated, okay? But if you are playing around with this and you happen to put in a external connection on here, one of these is ground because that chassis is the ground of the radio. So your phono input over here is ground. And that would be live if this thing was plugged in the wrong way. 
I think the antenna is as well. No, the antenna, they've insulated the antenna, but that is the antenna. They've actually put a capacitive blocking there so you don't get shocked if you put the antenna in a long wire antenna. But this thing is a hot chassis radio. Now, I did do a little experiment, little project in which there's an LED over here, and this is actually fitted into our sockets. And if I plug in this the wrong way, this LED lights up and tells me that there's a danger, put it the other way around. This was again another video I did and I'll link that above if you're interested. This is a way to make sure that when you plug it into the wall, you get warned that you're creating a hot chassis, okay? So this thing is very useful for me when I plug it in, it tells me if it's the right way around or the wrong way around. Let me show you. So we have my wall socket and I'm just gonna plug this in here. And it's off, which means it shouldn't be hot chassis right now. Let me try it the other way around. Haha, -ha. that light is now on, which is telling me that this thing is dangerous and it is hot chassis. And without risking much, I'm gonna show you just how hot chassis it can be. I've got my multimeter here, it's on AC volts, and I'm going to connect the one side of the multimeter, this one, I'm just going to touch it to the uh, outer sleeve of the uh, oscilloscope probe, which I know happens to be connected to mains earth, okay? Now, the other side of the multimeter will just touch the chassis. See that? That thing is 235 volts live over here. Everything that's metal connected to the chassis is at mains voltage. Our mains voltage is about 230. Today it happens to be 235. You, if it's in the States, it'll be 120, 115 or so, 120. So all this is at mains potential, okay? That is not fun. Now, if I flip the uh, socket around and I'll do that. And now if we do the same thing, eh, 2.2 volts. That's basically nothing. That is nothing. I can now touch it, okay? No problem. Now, the reason this thing is hot chassis is because the transformer we have over there does not isolate the mains. It is actually an auto transformer, which means that this is exactly the same as not having a transformer because one side of your mains is connected directly to the chassis, which becomes the ground of the radio, which at the moment, as I said, is safe because I know that neutral is there and not mains. This was an issue when connecting the Bluetooth module to there for the simple reason that most of the radios that are AC-DC sets do not have a supply there and you can't really count on having 6.3 volts or a low AC voltage available to supply the, uh, the module. So I had to get a bit creative and it is very, very simple. Remember, this thing is going to go inside the radio, so this will not be touched by anybody. This cannot be something that you can touch. This is inside the radio. Because one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output, the audio output from the module into the Phonos uh, connector. I'm gonna do that like this. In this case, I've put some sockets, some uh, banana plugs on here. That's ground. That is the socket. Now, this is your Phono input and it's taking the signal from the Bluetooth module and we still have something touching ground over there, which if this thing is left in hot chassis mode, this whole thing here, everything that's ground here will be at mains potential. Okay, now, because this goes inside your radio, as long as this whole thing is insulated or isolated, this thing's fine, but we still need our 6.3 volt supply. And this is where this thing comes in. I know this is cheating, but it is as simple as using a little Mains to 9 volt transformer. This is what I've got over here. This thing is actually uh, 230 volts to 9 volts and 9 volts. And I've connected the two together to get more current. So this is 220 mains. In my case, if you were in the States, you'd use a 110 or 120 to 9 volts. 9 volts comes out of here. And what I will do is I will connect this to the switched part of the mains in here. So in other words, you're going to use the same mains input switched by the switch on the radio, and you'll have to find that on your set, wherever your mains is switched, okay, to the uh, transformer or rather to the input of the circuit, you will connect this in there so that when you switch off your radio, this will also switch off. So this gets connected to the mains input at the radio, switched, and then this supplies your 6.3 volt AC, which will no longer be 6.3. You know, if you can use a 9 volt, that's even better. 
So 9 volts AC comes in here and you plug that in there. You connect that in there. The reason I've got all this set up is because I want to show you what the voltages are going to be, what current this thing is going to draw, and that this thing actually works. Now, again, I've got to warn you, this thing has to be hidden inside the radio so you don't touch this ground connection here, anything connected to the chassis. This would be soldered inside the radio as I did with the other one. And the reason I've left it like this is to show you that this can actually be flipped around and it'll still work. So let me set this up and I'll show you this in action. Okay, I think I've got everything connected. I've got mains coming to this transformer. At the moment it's coming from an external main source, but this would be connected to the switched mains inside your radio. The output from the transformer, the secondary, which in this case is about 9 volts, is coming here to where the connection is for the 6.3 on the board. The audio out goes to the radio, and I just have it plugged in. It doesn't matter which way, and I'll show you a little bit further ahead that it doesn't matter which way around you plug it. But at the moment, I've got it plugged into the phono input at the back of the radio. So what is the trick? The trick to get this thing to work is to give this thing a common ground. And the way that I did that is I used the two grounds that are close together on here. And which are they? Well, one of them isn't technically a ground. One of them is the zero volts for the 6.3 volt supply that I had. It's the inner one here. It says zero volts. And the other one is the audio ground, which is right next to it, quite conveniently. So what you need to do is short these two out. At the moment, what I've done is I've got a wire soldered to zero volts over there. I've got a wire soldered to the audio ground and I've twisted them together. What you would do is you'd go on the underside and these are the two grounds. That one there and that one there. That's your zero volts from your heater supply, what would normally be your heater supply. Now it's just one of your, um, your secondary lines from here. So you connect one of those, that one there, the zero volts to the audio ground by putting a little wire on there and shorting it. And this whole thing works beautifully with no buzz whatsoever. I actually thought that I'd have to take these two grounds or the zero volts and the ground all the way to the radio to short them up there, but it does not make any difference. I've experimented with that, it makes no difference. So this is actually quite nice. It's a simple mod. It's short these two, zero volts and the audio ground over there, and also just get yourself a little transformer. Now you can actually do this for a normal Let's call it, I'd call it normal, for a radio that has 6.3 volts uh, heater supply. If you don't want to use that, you can do exactly the same thing. And you'd also have to do exactly the same thing over here. Everything else would be the same. So that means that the board needs absolutely no changes because we can actually make it work simply by shorting the underside of those two points over there. And everything else works the same way. Okay, good. I have switched the radio on. I'll give it a second to warm up. And now I'm going to switch the supply to this on. In other words, I'm going to switch the supply to the little transformer on, which obviously this would come on simultaneously. And we've heard it pair. Okay, so that is seeing that. I'll just take this iPhone, switch on Bluetooth, and I should see, there it is, MHM28, that's my device. So I'll pair it, and I've heard the signal telling me that it's paired. Now I'll just find some royalty-free music on here and play something. There we go. Controlling the volume here. Now, the beauty of this is that because we've got the booster on here, the volume that you will hear when you switch to Bluetooth will be about the same level as whatever you were listening to on radio. That's what the boost is all about, but you can still control the volume on here, obviously. But it does mean you don't have to put the volume to max just to hear the Bluetooth. And of course, you probably know this, you can just change here. Fully controllable, sound quality is very, very good. And one thing I want to show you is I'm going to flip those guys around going into the radio, see what happens. I'm going to actually remove this and I'm going to flip these around. And it works exactly the same because now this is just audio. Whatever um, lead I put onto the ground on that becomes the ground of 
the chassis, which is the problem. It is a problem because I'll show you now. Let me put it back. And I can show you what happens when we take the uh, plug that's plugging this to the wall and flip it around and make it a hot chassis radio. I'll show you what happens to that lead that is just an audio lead, okay? I think you can see the multimeter on here. I've got it on AC volts. Let me flip this around. It hardly stopped because that's got enough supply on there on the um, capacitors to keep it going. Now I'm going to put this lead to the multi to the uh, to an earth connection up here on the oscilloscope and I'm going to touch the ground lead of the audio. See that? Hot chassis. Everything is hot now, including my audio ground over here, which is why this whole thing's got to go inside the chassis and protect it. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is the output from our transformer, the output voltage. Got this on AC volts. We're getting about 11 volts. So that's a nine volt transformer. The mains here is actually a little bit higher than usual today. It's a 237, I think it was, that we measured. So we're getting 11 volts. That's not a problem because what it means is that our um, actual op amp gets a little bit more voltage, which is not bad. Let me show you what current it draws. And to do that, I'll change the meter to Big Brother. I've got this on AC amps. I'm going to flip this across these leads and then separate them. So it doesn't actually switch off. What are we getting? 112 milliamps. Now it does go a little bit higher. So I would suggest something like a 200 milliamp um, transformer, secondary. This is not even warm. Uh, this one is 110 uh, milliamps per secondary. So I've got the two in parallel. It's giving me about 220 milliamps. So this is about double what I need. I'd probably, yeah, I would recommend double 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps, that's fine. And the fact that it's 11 milliamps is great because it means that the op amps now get a little bit more voltage. I think we've probably got, I don't know, uh, plus minus 13, 14 volts, which means our, um, our headroom is actually better on here. It means you can actually boost this more if you wanted to. With the 6.3 volt heater supply, we can't boost this more than about 3.3 times because then it starts clipping. But if you want to, if you want to use this sort of supply, you can boost this quite a bit more because you've now got a higher headroom, plus and minus, and you can boost this by five, six, seven times probably, and still get a clean signal going into your phono. So that's the answer to those who ask the question whether this project would serve for a AC-DC set, a hot chassis set, or any other radio that has a hot chassis and doesn't have 6.3 volt heater winding uh, or heater supply. The answer is yes. All you need to do is get a small transformer, this transformer actually costs about $4 or four, four euros here in Madeira. So it's probably cheaper where you are. I got this one because I like them to be encapsulated. Everything is more protected. Remember this whole thing, this whole thing goes inside the radio chassis in a corner somewhere. Keep it safe. Remember, it can also become part of the hot chassis problem. Everything that's ground on here, there's a lot of audio grounds here. Everything that's ground could become hot when you plug this the wrong way around. So I hope that's answered a few of your questions. One thing I've got to warn you about, if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff, do not mess with it. This thing is, um, this does use high voltages, so you do not want to risk it. Get somebody who does understand what's going on here to do it for you, or just don't do it at all. I mean, having a uh, tube radio playing Bluetooth is really great. I really love it. I'm, all of mine get converted, but it's not as great as not getting shocked. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Links are in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now. And most of all, stay safe. I repeat that. Stay safe.